looking at this material, it is historical material from the 30s, the 40s and the 50s, but at the, at the time that it was being produced, it was actually contemporary and cutting edge. And even though it looks historical now, at the time, it is a reflection of the excitement of what was going on with the Ballet Russe tours that came to Australia. And I think it's also important to think that what is contemporary now will one day be historical and that we will look back on what is produced now in the same sort of vein, maybe 50 years' time. Now, the one thing that was really important about the Ballet Russe was actually the synergy of art forms, the synergy of choreography, music, the, the world-renowned dancers, and visual artists working as designers for the ballet. And that's one of the things that, particularly in the, at this time, you see artists doubling as designers and bringing their creativity from the visual arts into their design and into the ballet. And I mean, the, the original Ballet Russe had people like uh, Picasso, um, De Chirico, some of the great modern, modern artists of the time designing for the ballets. And that's one of the great things um, about the Ballet Russe and why we celebrate it. The same thing happened in some of the companies that started in Australia um, after the initial tours. And there was uh, Kosova in Sydney, Borodansky um, here in Melbourne, and then later Laurel Martin. And what they did at this time was they got artists in to design. So what they're bringing is a sensibility from visual arts practice, perhaps and if you look at, say, the Harold Bike images, there's a set design and some costume designs. There's a great expression in these designs, which you can see is coming from perhaps his visual arts training and visual arts background. Again, Alan McCulloch, you can also see the influence of um, the Russian idea, the actual um, costumes that they're working with. A lot of these artists are informed by Cubism, and then what they're doing is taking it into about spatial design with set design because the set is about space. And so what you have someone like Erica McGilchrist and it's a design, it's coming out of a, crea a, a created space that you can see directly back to cubism. And that's what I'm saying. A lot of these people were again looking back to the past at this point of time. And this is for The Nutcracker and it's by Leonard French. I mean, he's a very important artist. He only designed for one production but if you look at this work, there is a great modernity in the designs that he's created. And again, it's an artist that's working with um, a company, uh, and, and it's in the spirit of the Aglias Ballet Russe, the synergy of design, choreography, music, and all of the art forms to create a unified whole. This costume is, um, was, was a lot of work that actually went into this costume to create what you see here today because um, uh, what you normally see for the Firebird and what people were probably expecting to see um, was a tutu, which is always, the Firebird's costume has always, I think, been a tutu. Um, but Leon Krasenstein was actually quite keen to, to create a different kind of look for this role. Every feather that you can see here, um, and it's, it's based on, I guess, the idea of two giant feathers that basically wrap around the dancer's body. Um, and there's a lot of engineering that went into actually getting um, those to sit exactly right, but also allow the dancer to, to you know, dance in, um, and do this choreography that was, again, quite risky, which is a lot of Murphy's choreography is, but also with this added element of dancing on top of eggshells and things like that, you know, you ha actually have to have a lot of physicality and be able to move freely. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people were involved um, and the Australian Ballet's amazing wardrobe department worked hard to, to create all the costumes, but specifically this one. Um, each one of those feathers has about eight layers of fabric that have all been hand painted and um, they spent a lot of time going around. You can sort of see the, the um, fluffy sort of raw edge that was everyone was going around brushing the edges of those feathers to create this sort of uh, realistic downy kind of feathery feel. So 
Um, the feather is, is again another important symbol in the ballet because it actually is a magic feather that um, is quite important as part of the story. There's a lot of pretty heavy duty tool in the very base of it to get it to, to sit up um, because it's almost based on a tutu form, a silhouette if you like, but it's, um, it couldn't be a tutu, it had to be something else. So it, it sort of is but it sort of isn't. So there's some really heavy net that's been layered up underneath the two feathers and then a, a really structured bodice too that was created um, I guess to, to help her um, and make it feel you know strong and support her and then the, the actual headdress is a molded latex that's had the, that same sort of feather. Leon did an amazing amount of research for this this work evil role in the in the ballet decided to become a, a snake a serpent kind of character um, the amount of folders and folders of, of research that he's done on um, uh, reptilian you know skeletons and um, uh, yeah it's quite amazing to think that he must have worked on it for months and months to get everything correct but also um, as Graham would encourage too in the dancers as well, are all encouraged to um, do research into the history of, of these works themselves. So they're all very familiar with um, what they were trying to recreate. Students are in, in, the, in the process now of designing folios, working with a client. Um, so we thought this was an absolutely wonderful opportunity to bring our students down and to get really hands-on experience. We can talk till we're blue in the face, and, but we're the teachers. Whereas having a practical hands-on experience um, away from the classroom has much more relevance to the students. And it's really good that they had a set time and it was explained to them that that is how designers work. They have a brief and for them to be able to adapt really well in that short hour and a bit to come up with their lovely costumes. And, and I think they will come away with feeling that, that they're able to do that really easily. It certainly helped them to develop their folio and they have a better understanding once again of what's expected of a designer. Um, but also um, to explore more the pathway, their career pathways and to now branch off into different, maybe this is a starting point, I've got an interest, what do I now need to do to actually go through and study to be a costume designer? I really think after this, you know, they go away with great joy and anticipation, um, thinking, yes, that's going to be me.